Are you okay? Where is he at? Can you come to me? Can you self-aid? Do you have first aid kit? Can you fix yourself? Where you hit? Yeah, where you hit. If you can't, if you can't fix yourself. I'm coming to you. Move. Let's say the door's locked. I can't get to it. So we have one is basically the one arm drag. Okay, and I'm dragging him to safety. We'll do shorter distances next time. <laughs> okay. We also have the two arm drag. Okay. Okay. Dragging him back. Oh, we're skipping. Two arm drag. And dragging him. Make sense? Reach on the inside. And lift straight up and carry him. Close it then, like that. Yeah. And why am I doing this? Why am I doing everybody different fingers? So like different, different, damage. Damage. different damage to different fingers, right? You gotta wear the mask, right? Could, could your fingers get blown? Oh. Get yeah, shot, absolutely. blown? Yes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. The Darth Vader. All right, guys, uh, stand by. And uh, how, how long does it take to bleed out? Two, two, three, two, three, 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 three minutes. minutes. And go. I'm going to say two minutes. That's pretty quick though, that's bad that thing like twice. <laughs> Time tight. Let's go guys. Time's ticking. Holster up. You don't see anything? He's doing blood sweeps. Good. Nine ten. Alright. So this is how much blood <laughs> someone approximately have inside their body, right? right? And let's say he's got Massive hemorrhaging coming out, right? So, this is one pint, right? It takes about how long to bleed out? Two to three minutes. Two to three minutes. That's one. So, can I get a visual amount of that? Okay. That's one pint of blood. Two. That's two pints of blood. Is he still okay? Somewhat. Yeah, he's, he's still okay. We're not freaking out too bad. It's bad, but it's not bad, bad, right? Right. Okay, so one pint, you can function just fine, right? Some people pass out, but you function just fine. Two pints? You said you can uh, function on two pints, and Kenny Free said he, he functioned on two pints, right? A little woozy, but you're still okay. You can still function. You're still in the fight. Put a tourniquet on, stay in the fight, right? What about three tourniquets? Uh, three pints. Yeah. Yeah. So it started to get spacey, possibly the consciousness at that point, right? Three pints. Three pints. Three pints. We're getting serious now, right? Yeah. This is starting to get scary. Three pints. All right. He's going to possibly be most likely what? Unconscious. Uh, go, go into consciousness now. Four pints. What happens at four pints? Yeah, most, sure. most definitely unconscious. Like I said, impossible intimate de or, or, or death, right? possible death, right? right. Unconsciousness <coughs> and death. Yes, sir. Uh, that way. At four pints. Possibly could die here, right? Yes. At this point, could possibly die. That's 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 unconsciousness. Impossible death. Five pints? He gone. This is going to be death, okay? He might still be breathing, but like I said, death is, is intimate. He's not coming back at this point. At this much. That's death. But he's still got all that blood still in his body, right? But it only takes that much to die. So to kind of give you an idea of how much we're talking about here, make sense? <clears throat> and then the blood's gonna calculate, it's gonna get sticky and everything else, and gooey. Five pints, that's death. As you see, it's starting to kind of slowly get bigger and bigger. But if it's squirting out, so we got ripple on the ground. I didn't see any blood initially, right? I'll run it. <coughs> Are you 
Are you okay? Where's he at? Can you self aid? Can you come to me? Can, can you come to me? Excuse me. Thank you. Can you come to me? No. Can you self aid? No, I'm coming to you. I come to him. I don't initially see anything, okay? I don't see anything that's jolting out. So I'm going to do just quickly do some blood sweeps, checking to make sure <coughs> that there's nothing there, okay? So there's no reason to do a tourniquet. I did my blood sweep to check that out. What's my next thing I'm going to do? Airway. 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 To do the airway, head tilt, chin lift method. And I'm just going to lift, lift that up and open his airway to look inside to make sure there's no blood, vomit, teeth, or tongue in the way. Got it? Head tilt, chin lift method. The other option, if I believe that he has a neck injury, is I'm going to press on his cheeks there, and I'm going to lift up on his jaw to lift up, open that airway. He's not going to let me. <laughs> open that up, got it? You, all you're going to do is push. You're pushing this jaw forward like an, uh, like an underbite. Make sense? The downside to that, and when would I use that? Neck injury. Neck injury, neck injury okay? The downside about that is you have to sit there and push it and keep this open, using it that way to keep from tilting the head. Because this tilts the head, this can cause further damage to his neck. But if I, a fall or accidents for the jaw thrust, right? And I'm looking inside for what? Yeah, obstruction. Uh, obstruction. Vomit, teeth, teeth vomit, blood. blood, anything else. Oh. If I can, I'm going to try to sweep that out. My next option, if he's unconscious at that point, okay? This is called an MPA, a nasal pharyngeal airway. The average size on this, they come in all kinds of different sizes. Okay, we're good. <laughs> yeah, I'm not <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna put it here, stick it in the air. No. <laughs> it has a bezel there, all right? You got a little cut there, okay? Your nose. You would not use this if he has a severe head injury, okay? This is when you would not use it at this point. But it has a little hole there. What this is made to do is to bypass, all right, the open airway here so that the tongue falls back. He still has an, an airway access. If you have a kit that has multiple sizes, okay, not just one average size, again, the average size is 28, what you do is turn your head to one. What you do to measure that, if you had a multiple sizes in your kit, is you just sit there and measure that to see which one is closest to the ear and the nose right there, and that's to help you measure it. But again, the average size is 28, which comes to your kit. The bezel is going to go right there towards the septum, the nose, okay, the nostril. You want that going in on the right side of the nostril. You're going to make a little piggy nose, okay, piggy nose like that. Before you do that, you can sit there and put some, uh, comes with a little lubricating jelly there, you put that over the hose, okay? It, what if I didn't have lubricating jelly, what could I use? Spit. Wow. Spit. I could either open his mouth, okay, run it there, get it wet, or I can sit there and look at myself, piggy nose and a, a bezel towards the septum, towards the nostril there, towards the inside, and shove that all the way down. It's gonna sit like that to give him an airway if it closes, okay? What about the left side? Well, the left side, your nose is all jacked up. It's made kind of weird. So if we had to do on the left side, we want the bezel to stick in, again, towards the septum, okay? Now it's backwards this time. Instead of it going down this way, like a hook going down, now it's going to go up to face towards the inside. Piggy nose, okay? I'm going to put that in halfway. I'm going to meet some resistance once I get halfway. And then once, the, once I get there, I'm going to spin around and go down until it sits. Is it possible that it gets still a little higher than that? Yeah. Once you feel resistance and it stops, go. But again, Bezel towards the septum, push it straight down. Once I get there, spin it, and it goes the rest of the can, way. Can you actually show us how to do it? Yeah, yeah okay. No All right. <laughs> With yeah, the spin. You better get like three guys, Bobos. Okay, check that. Next is airway. We just did airway. Next is what? Respirations, Respirations. okay? Respirations. At that point in time, I'm checking the box. When I check the box, I'm going to be very methodical, okay? I'm checking. I'm looking up in his hair. In his armpit hair. Can a bull wound hide in that hair? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So I want to sit there, and there's two ways to do it. You can either rake with your fingers and rake to find the wound, okay? Or you can slide your hand 
side to side, making sure that you're not missing anything, okay? I don't care which way you do it. I, I prefer basically just a sliding, and I'm seeing to make sure that I didn't cover anything from the what? Collar bones to the belt line, right? right? I'm also checking the hair, uh, the armpit hair. I'm checking the side. I'm checking the side. I keep coming back, and I'm checking. What if I do see, and I check over here. What if I do see something? What do I do? Place my hand on it, okay? Mm -hmm. I start pulling out my kit. If I don't have any kit, holy crap, give me a piece of plastic, give me something. All right, he got me a sandwich bag. Okay. If you can, try to wipe it. If not, use whatever it takes, okay, to wipe it. I did give you a little handy dandy because it comes in the little iPhone uh, hyphen kit. You wipe the blood. As soon as you wipe the blood, we're gonna put it when he does what? Exhale. Exhale, I slap it down there. Okay, I tape that up on all four sides. I'm using what now? My oh, forearm? Oh, oh. Hold it in place. How many uh, three, sides am I going to take? Three, three, three sides. Three sides. And you can do a partial on the fourth. So basically, I try to take it as much as possible. But making sure that I'd still leave some for, for a vent, right? Oh. So I got vent here, got vent there. So there's a vent there, vent there, right? So. Then, <coughs> next, I'm gonna sit there and roll him over. I'm gonna bring one hand up towards me. Okay, bring that up. Bring his arm here, all right? I'm gonna sit there, and I'm basically just gonna roll him over. Once I roll him over, before I do that, let me show it again. He can raise one leg up and then roll him over. At that point in time, doing the same thing again. I did a very heavy scan. Oh, got something here. I'm gonna start dealing with it. As soon as, you, as soon as you see something, put your hand on it and deal with it, okay? Don't wait to scan everything else. As soon as you see it, holy crap. Same thing again. Plastic bag. If I have something to wipe it, I wipe it, slap my plastic bag on there, potato chips, the field dressing wrapper, whatever it takes. And using my pressure lift, my forearm. How many sides am I going to do on this one? Four. All oh, four. All oh, four on this one. With no vents. With no vents. Now, here's something to think about. He's got an entrance and exit wound, okay? If he has an entrance and exit wound, I want to lift him up. It's on that side. He's just messed up all the way around, so I'm just going to keep him up on this side. Usually, you want to, you want the strong one, the strong lung to be on top, your wound to be at the bottom, which in this case it is. Why would that be? Drainage. The drainage. Very good. So I want my. my... Okay. okay, we got a bullet hole that's on the chest. What are you going to do? Or a stabbing? Could be a stabbing or a chest. Go ahead and tell me what you're going to do. Apply pressure first. Apply pressure. All right, create suction. Very good. Yep. Uh, is it heavy pressure or is it very light pressure? I mean, it wouldn't be very light. Yeah, it, well, it, can it, be, it be light. be light, because yeah. the only reason we have our hand over it is to do what? Seal. Seal. Seal it, to create suction. You do not want to, the guy's already having trouble breathing, okay? You don't want to make it even harder for it, okay? So it's barely on there just to cover, to create a seal, because you put your hand or your gloves. Now, what's next? And I would wipe it. Okay. Wipe it, and then what? Mm, be quick. And when do you stick it on? Preferably when? when? Exhale. When he exhales, very good. Okay, what would you do with the other piece? Do what? It put on the back. Okay, and tell me how you tape it on the back. All four sides. All four sides. If if you again, if both of these were improvised, what would you do with the top one? How would you tape that one? Three, leave it up. Okay, so confirm. All right, next person. This is a, at a junction. Okay, again, it's here in the junctions or here in the shoulders. All right, we're going to try to tourniquet. If not tourniquet, you know, wrap it slap it and then try to pack it or this is down the, in the leg okay and it's starting to kind of squirt out right from the heartbeat right I'm gonna sit there I'm gonna take my gauze again it's gonna be a little hard to kind of open and again especially if this is hemostat and hemostatic gauze remember what I was telling you once it touches blood it starts reacting it starts trying to coagulate that blood just kind of shove that down in there so it doesn't react to it again it's still kind of humping away I gotta do something about that I'm gonna rake out that, that yes. plot and I'm gonna put my finger on it, okay? Once I put my finger on it, I'm just gonna take a wad there, all right? I'm gonna start shoving. 
Finger over finger. It's most likely going to drop out of your shirt, but we're doing everything I can. Finger over finger. Finger over finger. Finger over finger. Finger over finger. Again, trying to keep it outside the blood. Finger over finger. Keep shoving it in there until I can't get any more, right? What am I going to do with it once I can't put any more in there? What's going to happen? You're going to tie it down. Well, I can sit there well, and take the rest of it, right? Put all pressure, pressure on there. Put a compression. I'm pressure. How long two am I putting it? Two, two, three, three minutes, minutes, right? Yeah. Uh, two, three minutes. All right. What am I going to do at that point? Wrap it, wrap it. I, I, I can look at it, right? Right. Look if, at it if, it, if I have hemostatic gauze in there, right, mm -hmm. and it is not working, it's still leaking out, and I have other hemostatic gauze, meaning like combat gauze or c -locks, I can pull it out and start over because apparently I didn't sweep it out enough and get it at the source there, yeah, the artery. Okay. And again, you want to push that finger towards the heart, right, where the artery's at. If you don't have any other combat gauze or hemostat, you're just going to keep what you got and keep applying more stuff on there, apply pressure, and then from there, apply a, a wrap, an Israeli bandage, or uh, any type of other wrapping to place on top there to give it pressure. Does that make sense? <laughs> again, this is for a junction in the hips, in the shoulders, or say the leg, or the arm, it's got a hole in it, okay? A gaping hole that you can pack. It's called wound packing. We would not do that on the chest or on the back, right? right. We're slapping that and creating the seal on the box. So wrap it, slap it, and pack it. Any questions? Awesome. Great job. Okay, sir. I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna sweep that towards the heart. Now, what if you have blood in your hands and you're putting that in your mouth? Yeah. Now, granted, you've got yeah. ketchup and strawberries right now <laughs> that you're tasting, but that's something to think about. You might want to try to have some other kind of way to um, to do it. To do that. Finger on top of finger, right? Finger on top of finger, letting it roll. Finger on top of. March, we dealt with the massive uh, hemorrhaging. We dealt with the airway. We dealt with the respirations, uh, checking for any holes in the box there, okay? We did uh, circulation, now we're down to H for hypothermia, okay? <coughs> On the hypothermia, we've already uh, checked, I was putting him in the recovery position by bringing this hand over, bring this leg up, provided it's not wounded, and I rolled him over. Again, I've already kind of checked him, but I wanted to kind of treat him, put about half of it over there and then shove the rest of it up underneath and the best I can the other half of it okay as much as I can and then I'm gonna sit there be careful watch his head protect his head roll him back over okay I'm gonna try to get the other part of him and I want to make sure that what's covered up yeah, that's it, right? Good. Because how much is left? 70%, yeah. right? 70%. I get my tape. Kind of tape around. And try to keep him covered up. I carry multiple space blankets and even going to Harbor Freights and getting those moving blankets. They're cheap as all get out. A uh, cheap old uh, moving blanket. Make sure again we're keeping the uh, face clear. <coughs> I tape it, getting the uh, moving blankets. And you can also tape, 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 with duct tape, whatever you got available. You cover that up. Does that make sense?